All right, year 11. So like I promised in, uh, promised in class that I was going to do more examples for exercise 2B, finding angles. I believe that was the request in class. So that's what I'm going to do for today's session. And then I'll make another video on examples for exercise 2E, parallel lines and perpendicular lines. I'll do a few more examples from the exercises so that as you're doing them, you know, if you're having troubles, uh, it'll look a bit more familiar. Okay, so uh, exercise 2B is obviously to find gradients. Um, but the one thing that is added new is to know that a gradient can also allow you to find the angle that it makes. So what I'm trying to say, I'm just going to move away uh, and now I'll talk about it theoretically first. Um, when you have a straight line, so something like this, for example, I'll draw it like that. Yeah, and let's say this point here on the y-axis is, uh, let's say, uh, 4. Yeah, and let's say the point over here is uh, uh, 2. Okay, negative 2, right? Then when you draw a line, this obviously has a gradient, right? And the gradient, remember gradient is based on how much you rise over how much you run. Agree? And we know that you can also find the gradient by y2 minus y1, which is really distance. What's the distance vertically? That's 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 what you're actually doing there. Because at this point here, you got 0, 4 as the coordinate, and over here it's negative 2, 0. So if you think about it, the y coordinate you're at 4 and the other y coordinate you're at 2 so from 4 to 0 so not 2 0 from here to here so 4 to 0 that's a distance of 4 but you know that because you can work it out you can say y1 or y2 whatever you want to call it 4 minus the other y coordinate tells you the vertical distance so minus 0 okay and then obviously if you want to know how far horizontally it is like from here to here well, the x coordinates tells you that. You see, horizontally you went from negative 2, which is here, and over here is 0 again. So negative 2, and this is um, 0. Okay, so that makes sense when you say x2 minus x1. All you're doing is you're finding uh, the horizontal distance. Um, so really what I'm trying to say is how far is it from here to here. Logically, from negative 2 to 0, that's two, 2 units. Yeah, so negative 2 take by 0. And what that allows you, actually, I, I've done it wrong. It's because I've taken four from this, both of these coordinates, then I have to use now zero minus negative two. Okay, so this now gives you four over zero plus two, and that gives you four over two, and that gives you two. To, that was what this exercise was about. It was to find the gradient, yeah? So now I know how to find the gradient from two points. Okay, so the two points were negative 2, 0, and 0, 4, okay? Those are my two points that I gave initially from drawing this diagram. And what you can see is, you can call this, uh, you know, if you want to know the horizontal distance, you just find the distance between these two and the distance between 0 and 4, okay? So again, I'll draw it neater, so 0, negative 2, how far is it horizontally? And then 0 to 4, how far is it uh, vertically? Uh, rise over run tells you the gradient. Yeah, that's that's all I did. Now, along with this idea, you see, this also gives you a triangle, which I'll draw again. See, that gives you a triangle. That triangle, which now I'm going to color in red, so you can see. So this triangle here also makes an angle with the x-axis in this direction. Okay, so you see how it's making that angle with this direction, that direction there. So it makes this angle. Whereas if it was making an angle with this direction, then obviously that's the angle. True? That's the negative direction. That's why the question always says it is um, find find the angle, da 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 da, the lines join make with the positive direction of the x axis. What they're trying to say is if you have a line and then it's the positive direction of the x axis, find that angle that it makes. Yeah? Whereas if you made a line, you drew a line and it's with the negative direction of the x axis then it's this angle, okay? So, going back to my point, uh, we now know the gradient is two in the example I've given, okay? I'll draw the diagram again so I don't confuse you all, especially if you're sort of trying to find your feet with these questions. When we draw the line, okay, we draw a line, let's say that was four and that was negative two, okay? 
Obviously, I've drawn it off scale. I'll do it again. Let's say that was an A2 there. Yeah? Then, what the question's asking in question 7 is, they're saying, find the angle that it makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. Yeah? So, your job right now is to find out what is that angle and how do you find out. So, I want to draw this section here, this triangle, a bit larger. This is what you have. You got these two points. And you knew that this was negative 2 and this is 4. Now, obviously, the distance is 2, not negative 2. Negative is just the direction. Yeah. Your job is to find out this angle. Can you see what I'm doing there? So if I just zoom in, I'm just zoom, zoom in. Can you see that I have this triangle? See this triangle? Yeah. I'm just drawing it over here now. Yeah, I'm just drawing it over here. Cool. Now, my goal is to find out the angle. So how do you find out the angle? Now, back in year 10, we know that we can label the sides and we can call this the opposite side. We can call this the adjacent side. Oops, adjacent side. Okay, so which of the three functions in trigonometry that you learned in year 10 that has opposite and adjacent in a triangle and an angle? Well, the only one you know is, remember, Sokatoa tan of the angle is equal to the opposite. See, so O divided by adjacent, so opposite of adjacent. Which in our case here as well, known as the opposite, is equal to the distance, which we already know was 4. Because we worked it out, y2 minus y1 before, remember, over here? We did y2 minus y1, and we got 4, yeah? And that is exactly just the height. See that triangle again? See that triangle? It's just the height of the triangle, so that's my 4. So that's 4 over the adjacent, which is the distance horizontally, which is your run. And we knew it was 2. So this gives you 2. Now, that 2 is exactly the same as this 2, which is the gradient. That's why we know tan of theta when you say opposite over adjacent, is actually like saying rise over run. Because that's what you're really doing. That means tan of an angle is actually your gradient. When you type in your calculator tan of 35 degrees, tan of 45 degrees, whatever that answer is, that is your gradient of the line, meaning how steep the line is. So now, if you want to find the angle, this goes all the way back to uh, year 10 again. So what I'm saying is tan of theta is equal to the gradient. And the gradient we know is 2. So tan theta equals 2. The only way to find tan, I mean to find theta, is you remove tan. And we know that on your calculator you can do tan inverse of both sides. And the tan inverse will cancel out. That gives you now, let's I'll draw it again, theta equals to tan inverse of 2. Okay, so tan inverse of 2, and then you type in your calculator what tan inverse of 2 is. Uh, and remember, this will always calculate from the positive x-axis to whatever angle you make when you do tan inverse of 2. Okay, so I'm going to do on a calculator now. I'm going to just uh, open up a virtual calculator. Teacher software one. Okay, so th this was just an example I just made up, okay? But I'm trying to give you the theory as to how it works. So the gradient is tan of an angle. Tan of an angle, providing the angle is coming from the uh, positive side of the x-axis, tan of that angle is going to give you the gradient. Okay, that's that's what it does. So, go okay, menu calculator, and we want to do tan. So there's a trig over here, tan inverse of 2. Just going to make sure your mode's in degrees. I'm just going to check that I've got degrees. No, it's in radians. So the angle is in degrees now. Okay, so here we go. Oh, whoops. I'm going to do control enter. Control enter. So controls over here. You hold the control button and you press enter and you get a decimal rather than exact values. So this tells me it's 63.43 degrees. Yeah, that's the example I just made up. Now, finally, We've gone through all the theory. Let's do the questions now. Same thing. This time they didn't give you a picture like I did. Okay, so let's do. Uh, I do. I do seven C. Yeah, I do seven C. 
7 C you got 0 2 and you got negative 4 0 now what you, all you have to understand from the theory that I was trying to say is the gradient is equal to tan of the angle okay so the first question is well what is the gradient you've got two points how do you find the gradient and same thing again like your previous examples from exercise 2b the gradient you can find by doing the horizontal distance and then you find out the vertical distance yeah from 0 to 2 clearly it's a distance of 2 and 0 to negative 4 it's clearly a distance of 4 right but let's do it properly okay so you can draw the diagram or you can do y2 minus y1 and over x2 or whatever you want yeah I'm gonna do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so I'm just trying to find the vertical distance y2 minus y1 so let's call this y2 so 0 minus 2 so if I took this 0 and I minus stuff of this then now I'm gonna take negative 4 take away 0 negative 4 take away 0 so that gives me negative 2 over negative 4 gives me half two negatives make a positive yeah so now I know now I know the gradient is equal to half but I wasn't interested in, in finding gradient. I'm more interested in finding the angle. So what we're saying now is we're saying, all right, well, I now know tan of an angle is the gradient, and the gradient is half. Now the only way to find theta is you remove tan. The only way to remove tan on both sides is you, you do tan inverse. Now we know tan inverse will cancel this out, and then you gotta do tan inverse on the right-hand side. So type in your calculator, tan inverse of Half. Now on a scientific calculator it's a bit easier. Just make sure your mode is in degrees. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy this one down and then I'm going to do half. So control, divide, half. There we go, 26.56. Now they did tell you to correct to two decimal places. So my answer would have to be 26.57 degrees. So there you go, this is now equal to 25.57. Well, I can't remember what it was actually. 26 point, 26.57 degrees. Okay, so that's how I would do um, question 7C. Let's do, uh, let's pick another one from 8. Okay, I'm going to do 8F because I'm assuming a lot of kids will find 8F tricky. And I'm going to try to find one with a negative gradient. Uh, which one has a negative gradient? Mm. 2, 6, negative 2, well that's a positive gradient, which one has a negative gradient, negative 4, negative 3, <laughs> well, that's positive, negative 3 to 6, negative 3, 4, ah, this one's a negative gradient, and I'll do these, I'll do these two, okay, 8C and F, just in case you get confused, so 8C, we have negative 3, 4, and 6, 1. Negative 1's a bit more tricky, and I'll show you why. I'm going to draw a diagram for this one now, okay? So let's have a look. Negative 3, 4, so negative 3, 4, let's say negative 3, and positive 4 is, let's say, about here. Then this is your coordinate, yeah? Negative 3, 4. And then your second coordinate is 6, 1. So let's say 6 is over here, and 1 is about here. Okay, so one's there. So now, if we join the dots, what we have, which I should use this one. Let's see if that helps. Oh, that didn't work. It's a bit funny. Ooh. Whoa, whoa. Okay, this is a bit hard. Maybe I should have just drawn it. I don't know why it's not fitting. All right, don't worry about it. Let's just ignore this. Eh. All right, let's just draw a line. Okay, so that's my straight line. And basically, this is we've got clearly a negative gradient for this graph here. But let's find the gradient. The gradient, again, is, remember, you're trying to find vertical distance and horizontal distance to the next point, yeah? Now, clearly, vertical is, was from 4 to 1. So distance from 4 to 1, obviously, has to be 3. Yeah, but I'm just going to do it the proper way. Yeah, so with the formula, we use, let's say, this 4. This is the y coordinate, take away 1. Yeah, 4, take away 1. That's vertical distance. Horizontal distance. Since I took 4, take away 1, now I'm going to take negative 3, take away 6. 
That gives me four take away one, which is three. Negative three minus six is negative nine. And that gives me now negative one third. Okay, yes, I know the negative was on the bottom, but uh, I don't like writing negatives on the bottom, I just write it on the side. It's the same thing. When you say three divided by negative nine is the same thing as saying negative of the third. That's why, okay? So what I've found out now is the gradient is negative a third, right? The problem with this is a lot of students will follow on with the method I taught you guys before. And what you would have done is you would have said, well, since that's equal to the gradient, tan of theta equals to the gradient, which is negative a third. And then what you would do is you say tan inverse on both sides to remove the tan and you say, type that in your calculator and get your answer, yeah? Wrong, I'll tell you why. I'll show you why this is wrong. I'll do a tan inverse of uh, negative one third so you can see what the answer is and you can see why this is not gonna be correct. Okay, so negative one third. It's negative 18.43 degrees yeah so the question is why is the angle negative okay where why is it negative and and technically the angle is correct but it's not where we want remember we want it from the x-axis yeah so we want so remember if it's the line with the x-axis now if this is the x-axis here this is the x-axis this is the direction the black is the line so this is the angle we want now does that look like 18 degrees no that looks much larger than 90 degrees so what angle did you actually just work out? The angle that you just worked out is this one here. That's negative 18.43 degrees. Okay, that's what you just worked out. But we don't want that because that's in the negative direction of the x-axis. And the question says, I want it with the positive direction of the x-axis. Okay, which is this direction. So that's why the angle that you need is this one. Okay, that's the angle that you need. That's what you want. Why is it that when you did tan inverse you get this angle? Okay, another way of thinking about it is when you do your gradients, you got your rise and run, true? This is your rise, this is your run. And you found the run was what, nine, yeah? So opposite over adjacent, you're actually finding the angles here. This is the angle. And they're all the same. The, the, if I drew this angle over here, which I'm gonna highlight now, this angle over here is the same as this angle and it's the same as that angle. And you're like, well, why, why is that? I'll tell you why, I'll show you why, okay? Back in year seven or year eight, you learnt parallel lines, yeah? These parallel lines are the dotted lines. See those dotted lines there, the black and red, yeah? Those are your parallel lines. This black line here, this really long black line is this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'll do it in black so you don't get confused. Is that, yeah? When you talk about the black line and the parallel line here, that angle that it makes, this is the parallel line, and this is the angle that you're talking about. Okay, that's that's your rise of a run, that's the angle that you make. Now why is this angle equal to this angle? Because they're alternates. You see the black line and, and the parallel, the, these two are exactly the same, theta, theta, yeah? And then if you're questioning, like, well, why is this one equal to this one? Well, it's the same thing, because the blue line down here is also parallel. So you get another parallel line. So of course, these angles are the same. Can you sort of see that picture that I'm I'm trying to show there? If I, if I just rub this off and I did a, try to do a copy of what we have up there. This is the red, yeah, which is up here. That's the red dotted line. This is your black line. And then this is the black, black dotted line. This is what you have. See what I'm doing? And then this is the x-axis uh, in blue. So I'm going to color it in blue. So you can do the comparison. Yeah, that's why when you did the tan inverse, the angle that you actually look uh, that you have is down here. This is your 18 negative 18.43 degrees. Why is it negative? Because this angle here is also the same as this angle here. Remember back in year seven, these are called vertically opposites. These two are alternates, and these two are corresponding. This is corresponding, this is alternate, and then this is vertically opposite with each other. Okay, so all the things that you learnt in year seven, I'm applying into this example here. So what I'm trying to say, okay, so how do you do this problem now that we know this is 18.43 degrees, right? What we want is this angle over here, yeah? So if we want this angle over here, that's pretty easy because we know in a straight line, okay, in a straight line, 
in a straight line, which I'll, I'll highlight again. So I know it's confusing because I'm drawing so many lines and I'm explaining it as I'm doing it. But this straight line here, remember in a straight line, the angle that it makes is 180 degrees. True? In a straight line, the angle makes 180 degrees. It's half a circle, true? And then another half circle is another 180. That's why you say full circle is 360 degrees. Yeah? Double 180 is 360. Now, if you know that this line that goes through, you know that this is 18.43 degrees, then if this is 18.43, then what's the left over to make up to 180? That's what you're trying to find. Yeah, this is the one you want. So the only way to get your answer is if you know that this is 18.43, then all you have to do is just say 180 degrees minus 18.43. If you're questioning why am I not uh, minusing a negative 18.43, because that's a negative there, yeah? The reason being is because that is talking about this angle down here, negative 18.43. I'm not interested in negative angles. Yeah, I'm interested in the these ones, and I know this is the positive angle of it. 18.43 is the value. You're interested in the value. Don't worry about direction, yeah? This is like clockwise direction. Usually we work with anti-clockwise direction. That's, that's why. Okay, so I'm saying, okay, 180 degrees, take away 18.43, whatever that answer is, is the angle I want. So 180, take away the answer. Whoops. I forgot that negative is still there. Got to take away that negative. Is 161.56, which makes more sense. 161.57 degrees. It makes more sense because this angle that you're looking at is obviously bigger than 90. So that makes more sense. Yeah, so when you're working and you get a negative gradient, just be careful. Try to watch this video again. Try to get your head around that negative gradient thing, yeah? I'll try to find another one just so I can show you. Mm. I'll make up one. I'll make up one. Uh, here we go. Let's do, let's do one that's pretty obvious. Let's do one, one. That's, and then I do a line down, yeah? Okay, that's obviously that's going to have a negative gradient and and if you were to do it This is a height of one from this point. It's a height of one to this point is a distance of one true Yeah, so I got my triangle now if that's my triangle then the angle that I'm going to work for when I do tan inverse It's opposite of adjacent true and what I'm going to find out is this angle opposite of adjacent That's what it's going to tell me the angle that I want is the x-axis positive direction with the line. So this is the angle I want. But when I do tan inverse, I will find the angle in here. Okay, so the first thing I need is a gradient. That's what I need. I need a gradient. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now we can skip all that because we already know the vertical distance clearly is 1. So it's 1. Height is 1. Rise is 1. Run is also 1. So that means my gradient is 1. True. What we've learnt so far is tan of theta is the gradient. So tan of theta is equal to 1, right? But the problem with, oh, it shouldn't be 1, it should be negative 1. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me do it properly. This is 0, 1, and this is 1, 0. So when you do your mathematics, let's say why we, this 1 take away 0, so 1 take away 0, and then 0 take away 1 clearly gives you a negative gradient. See, I picked up I was wrong because the gradient should have been a negative value. And when you see a negative gradient, so this is your negative gradient, you just got to remember you have to take an extra step to find out the positive angle. Yeah? Because right now you're working out for this angle. That's not what you want. So here we go. Let's work this one out. So to find out theta, you tan inverse on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the calculator. Go tan inverse. I already know it's negative 45, but you know, just, just do it for you. Negative 45 degrees. Okay, so it's negative 45 degrees. But remember, this negative 45 degrees is actually talking about this angle here, negative 45 degrees, because you're going clockwise. That's the only time you get negative angles. Usually, we go anti-clockwise. So if you want to know anti-clockwise, then the only way to do that is you need this. This is what you need. Yeah, and you know in a straight line, it makes 180 degrees. True? It makes 180. So 45 plus something makes 180. So to work that out, you can just say 
it should be 180 minus the value. See, the negative just tells you the direction. The value that you want is 45. So 180 take away 45, 135 degrees, which makes more sense. So it makes more sense if you look at the red angle that, whoops, red angle that I've drawn here, so from here to here, that clearly is above 90. So it makes sense that it's 135 degrees. Okay, so that's how you do negative, negative um, angles. Let's try another question. Let's do uh, exercise, uh, question eight, 8F. Okay, let's do 8F. 8F, what was 8F again? It was uh, CB and BC, yeah, CB and BC. 8F, you have CB and BC, yeah? I know they're letters and you're like, oh, how do I do this? Same thing, same thing. We don't know if this is a positive gradient or a negative gradient, we don't know. Right, but what we do know is to find out the gradient, we know we're going to need y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. True? So, here we go. I'm going to, oops, I'm now going to do, let's call this y2. So that's c minus the other y value, so c minus b over, and then now x2 minus x1, so b minus c. True? Okay. And, and what you can see there, this now requires a bit of algebra. On the numerator, they both look very similar. What I can do is I can take the negative out in the denominator. Okay, so I can see b minus c, I can take out a negative. So what I'm saying is, what if I took out a negative as a common factor? Negative times something gives you negative, uh, positive b. So if I just did, that's a negative. If I took a negative, negative times something to give you negative c is positive c. True? See, if you expand that bracket and denominator, it should look like this one. That's all I'm doing. I'm just taking out that negative. Yeah? And what I can see is I've got negative B plus C. Now, I know this looks funny, but if you rearrange the top line, see, this is a negative B. Notice? That's a negative B. That's a negative B. This is a positive C. True? I'm just rearranging them. And what you can see, you've got negative B plus C. They both look the same. So you can say numerator, which is negative b plus c, that's one group. And in the denominator, I've got negative of negative b plus c. So that gives you negative one. If you're confused why I could cancel that out, it's like saying, when I ask you three divided by three, you'll tell me it's one. Four divided by four is one. A divided by a has to be one. Anything divided itself is one, true? So if I then said a plus b divided by a plus b, of course, it has to equal to one, two, true? Okay, so when I say negative b plus c divided by negative b plus c, and I've got a negative on the outside, just work out what this is. Negative b plus c divided by negative b plus c has to be 1. And then you've got the negative on the outside. That's why I knew it was negative 1. Okay, so all I just did was I found the gradient by saying y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 gives me the gradient of negative 1. You want to find the angle? Oh, hey, gradient negative 1. Oh, that, that's the same thing as... What I did over here. See that? There you go. You can just take take this one and put it over here. There you go. I've got a gradient of negative one, and once you know there's a negative gradient, you've got to be careful. Always got to do 180, take away the value. Okay, so when you do tan inverse of negative one, you get negative 45. Then you, once you know you've got a negative angle, you always got to take it away from 180. And that's how you do negative negative ones. Okay. There you go. So that's 8F with the letters. That's that's how you got to manip manipulate it. So you're up to this stage and the best way is to manipulate it. Look, you didn't have to do it this way. You could have done it this way as well. It would have been the same thing. If you took a, if you had C minus B over B minus C, okay, instead of taking negative on the denominator, you could have done it on the top. You could have said, all right, what about if I took negative on the top? So it would be negative of negative C and then negative of positive B. It would have been the same thing. See what I mean? This is a positive B, this is also a positive B. This is a negative C, that's a negative C there. Okay, so you, they're both the same value. So it's like rearranging it, if I just rearrange them, it's like positive B minus C, and this is positive B minus C. Divide them, it becomes one. So negative one, okay? And then you, you just go back to this step over here. Tan of theta equals gradient, gradient's currently negative one, Tan inverse both sides. If it's a negative gradient, gotta take it away from 180. Okay, so I just done 
An example of 7C, 8C, 8F that I think might have been tricky. Uh, I'll do 9. Let's do 9B just because it has a big number, yeah? Incline at an angle of... So find the gradient of a straight line which is incline at an angle of 135 degrees to the positive direction of the x-axis. Okay, so that's key there. I'm just going to copy this. How do I copy it? Ugh. All right. I'm just going to copy this. 9B. It's a longer video than I had expected, actually. It's all right. Hopefully, uh, I explain it well. Watch the... Make sure to watch the example carefully. Okay, so if we were to do 9B, all they're really trying to say here, okay, all they're trying to say is if you have an axis, okay, this is your x-axis positive direction, this is the negative direction, true? Then there is a, find the gradient of a straight line. So there's a straight line where it's inclined at an angle of 135 degrees with the positive direction. So positive direction is this way, and it inclines with a line with 135 degrees. That's what they're trying to say, positive direction, true? So if I drew a line, it, the only way to make 135 degrees is it has to be something like this, true? Because that's bigger than 90. It can't be like this, because then that's not 135 degrees, true? So this is 135 degrees, and they're now asking you to find the gradient of this line. And it's the same, same thing. So tan of theta equals to the gradient. Remember that. True. Now, if you do tan of theta equals to the gradient, then all you have to do now is just type in here. You say, all right, well, I want tan of the angle. So tan 135 degrees. It's negative one. That's your gradient. Done. Because that's what it tells you. Yeah, they just tell you it's negative one. It doesn't matter. You're not trying to find this angle here. You don't need to know. You just know by definition tan of theta equals to the gradient. That's all you have to do. Tan of 135 degrees. And that gives you negative 1. So gradient equals negative 1. Done. Okay. Question 9 is much easier than question 8 and 7, but it's just the reading. A lot of students get confused. Okay. But that finishes exercise 2B on... Uh, angles that someone had requested in class, I forgot, but I'm going to pause the video so I can do another one. Okay, don't want this to be too long. Thank you for watching.